Hey guys, welcome back to the RCA HT241 television and Naroko Protogram Duo View Restoration Project. Boy, that's a mouthful. Uh, the TV is at a bit of a standstill, as I'll explain in a moment. So I'll get you up to speed with what's going on with this, and then I'm going to switch gears to start working more in earnest on the Protogram side of things. Figured next I would uh, take apart the high voltage box uh, initially to remove corrosion from it. And then I saw how filthy it was inside, so it's definitely worth the effort. Check that out. That is what years of high voltage and static will do. It attracts all that dust, and eventually that will start arcing over. So while well, I'm servicing this thing. Uh, Good idea to clean all those dust bunnies out. I don't think there are any components under here. There may be a resistor in the middle of all that, a current limiting resistor. And there's a couple back there. A damper tube and one mica cap. Well, I will check that stuff. Flyback looks to be in fine condition. No cracks or anything on that wax donut. Oh, uh, so with coil I had to detach. I did have to take the uh, anode uh, lead thing uh, off. You just put a soldering iron uh, right down the middle, heat it up, and uh, it pulls off. I had to do that because I was running through a hole in the box. I'll also replace these grommets, the rock hard. This comes in two halves, the other half I have in the uh, Acid remover bath right now. When it's done, I'll put this one in. Just about done removing corrosion from half of the high voltage box, and I was surprised by what I discovered. Uh, it's copper plated, so it's steel that's copper plated, and then uh, I don't believe it was painted. I think it was chemically treated, maybe with liver of sulfur or some similar chemical to turn the copper black. Well, I'm going to be painting it because this didn't do a very good job of preventing corrosion. There was spots of rust all over. As you can see, the copper did not hold up very well over time. Just about done um, with removing the corrosion and amazingly it is in the mid-50s in the middle of January, which is <laughs> far warmer than it usually is this time of year, so I'm going to get to spray paint this. I've got some high performance flat black engine enamel or some such. It's supposed to dry in 15 minutes, so uh, as soon as this uh, cooks a little longer, clean it off thoroughly and then head out to the garage to spray it. I completely finished up work on the high voltage box. Everything's been cleaned, new tubes. Uh, resistors replaced. Very, very happy with the way this high performance flat black enamel worked out. No orange peel, no runs, no peeling. Uh, put in some new sheet metal screws to hold it all together and attached a new power cord. And thank you, Dan Jones, for the suggestion to use binder screws. They use these in leather work or paper crafting or various uh, arts and crafts projects. Absolutely perfect to hold these on. Originally they were riveted. When the rivets are gone, um, that can be a little troublesome to reattach them, but these, these work out great. I'll include a link to where I got these off of Amazon. They are M5 by 6 millimeter. I also started doing some work on the cabinet. It's actually footage I shot before. I did any work on the chassis, so be prepared for a little jump back in time. So far, this is the only part of the TV I've brought inside. I'll try to get the rest in tomorrow. What this is, is the top. The first um, few table models RCA came out with, 46 to 48, maybe into 49. They had an access hatch on the top of the sets. I uh, take two screws off and the, the suction at the top would come off. Very easy access to the insides. 
I assume it was to service it, uh, although you could still get at the tubes if you took the back off, but they have these. Um, now in this particular model, the speaker is also part of it. It's not a ventilation grill, that is a speaker grill. Now I brought this inside because I want to play around with this a little bit to see what we can do with the old finish. Um, so in addition to <laughs> restoring the TV, playing with the duo view, I want to see if we can kind of rejuvenate this old finish. I did an RCA 630TS a few years back. That's a model from two years prior to this. Similar construction, similar type of veneer. And I was able to sort of spruce up the old finish by a combination of techniques. Uh, but mainly lightly sanding, cleaning the old finish, and putting on fresh lacquer. Uh, so first thing I want to start out with is cleaning this and then inspecting it more thoroughly. So it appears there's some kind of color added to it. I can see there's some chips here and there where the color's gone. Probably toner lacquer, because where the finish flakes off, the color goes with it. If it was stained, the color would be more into the wood instead of just in the finish. Uh, and around the edges, maybe the same toner, probably, because you can still see the grain kind of through it, but there's a lot of loss around the sides. Or maybe this is opaque. There's some... Eh, it's funny, on this side where there's more gone, it looks like it's transparent, but this definitely looks opaque. There's so much of it gone, I'd be inclined to do something about that. Uh, but the center section I want to clean, and to clean it I'm going to use Gojo Pumice Free Hand Cleaner. Does not harm wood, does a great job cleaning off old grime and oil and wax. See what we have, and then possibly use one of these products to sort of melt the old finish. Not exactly what they are intended for, these are more for new finishes. This is, um, if you spray on fresh lacquer, get some moisture trapped under it, it can get cloudy. And this is if you have orange peel on a new finish, this will help melt it. Both of them contain more solvents than normal lacquer. So they will help melt the old finish and add a little bit of lacquer to it. Ideally, spray this on. It kind of combines with this, flows out, you get a nice flat surface, and it looks great. And <laughs> maybe put on a couple more finish coats of lacquer, and you're done. The great thing about lacquer is you can add more on top of it. You can kind of melt it because it's a solvent based finish v versus oil which is like oxidizes. Um, this is just it's stuff that's dissolved in a solvent and if you put the solvent back on it it melts again. Shellac for example is similar and uses grain alcohol. Um, this uses lacquer thinner, or acetone. Uh, I've tried this once or twice, but didn't have great results. So what I may, I'll try it, but what I may end up having to do is lightly sand it and just put on sanding sealer. And then just put fresh lacquer on top of it, which is fine too. Don't have to use sanding sealer, could just put fresh lacquer on top of this, which I've also done. But the sanding sealer helps fill in voids. There's a lot of little scratches and checks and dings in this that the sanding sealer would help fill in. Uh, and also seal any contamination, which is also always a possibility. Who knows what's on this surface? Fresh lacquer may not be happy. It may form fish eyes and kind of pull away from it. But let's start with cleaning, see what we have to work with. It's mahogany veneer. Uh, looks like there's two pieces. I can see this. Looks like there's a seam right here. Maybe another one over here. It's a ba it's a very basic cabinet. It's a, it's a box basically. <laughs> Not a whole lot of style to it. So that's why I'm inclined to experiment. Uh, also, oh, should be opaque in there. What I might do, I've done before on this, is forget about lacquer toner, lacquer, any of that, and just use some water-based acrylic and use some burnt sienna or something like a dark brown, and just brush it on inside there. I've done that with some Filco radios for the speaker grill. Uh, it, it, that's. You can't spray in there realistically and not get it all over the place, so brushing something on is far more effective. Before I do anything, of course, I want to get the speaker out of here so I don't uh, ruin it. You may think it's crazy for me to work on or worry about the finish when I've got electronics to restore. Well, I like to do both because a lot of the finishing stages will take 
a day or two to set up and generally go pretty quick. So do some quick work on this, let it sit for a day while I work on the electronics. with having an upward facing speaker. Boy, it collects a lot of dirt. Some dust bunnies. Hmm, I was really hoping this cloth would come off too. Looks like it would probably get off without too much effort because if I'm going to spray anything, I don't want to get it on that. I believe there's a fuel coil inside here. We have three terminals on this. It doesn't appear to be magnetic. It's in good shape. So we want to be careful with that. Oh boy, this cloth. Well, I mean, the one good thing is you, it's not like you can really see it, so. Yeah, I'd probably reuse that if I really want to. Maybe just use a piece of burlap. It's not that crucial. All right, now I'll go, Joe. It's just hand cleaner, so I'm not exactly concerned about using my bare hands. I feel like I can see how much nicer that looks. There's a little bit of moisture added to it. So, smear it on, let it sit a while, it'll liquefy on its own. And wipe it off. That's all you gotta do. All right. Let's see about removing it since it's gotten very liquidy since it's been sitting on here. I think you can also see how nice that mahogany veneer is. It's just so clouded up by the dirt and it's incredibly dull finish. Maybe UV damage too. Oh yeah, that is filthy. I may want to do this twice. I can also see more defects in it too. There's some gouging and scratching in here. This is, this is, this is a pretty rough finish too. So if I want to get this a piano finish, a smooth finish, I have to do a bit of work. I can lightly sand the old finish, which would help, but this is deteriorated enough. It's quite a, there's some loss, there's some alligatoring. I don't want to just sand this directly. I want to put something on it before I do any sanding. Not bad, after three passes of the Gojo, I uh, wiped it down thoroughly with some denatured alcohol, and here we are. <laughs> it looks like a different piece of wood. So, now what? I think I will very lightly sand it with 320, and I'll tell you why. In spite of all that cleaning, I suspect there is still some gunk on here. I'd like, and sanding it will take it off, it will also slightly flatten this down. These old finishes were, were generally fairly thick, so I'm not worried about really losing any color. Uh, and then I'm going to try the uh, Blender Flow Out. Just do a, a quick pass or two. I don't expect it to do a dramatic transformation, but it will certainly stabilize any, uh, all the uh, finish that's left on here and give me a good surface to start working with. Here it is after a bit of light sanding. Of course the sheen has been knocked down. Uh, now I can really see where the finish loss is. It's worse than I thought. Here's what it looks like right after spraying on the blender flow out. I don't know how well you can see that but it's, it's pretty darn liquidy. A lot of solvent in there. I haven't laid out level, 
Just let this sit for a while, all the solvents will evaporate. See how it looks. You get a pretty good idea. Now, uh, looks like the only real areas I'm concerned about are a little bit in the grill area. Maybe right there, a little bit on the edge, and there a little bit. But overall, not bad, not bad. Well, as is sometimes the case, the more I cleaned it and sanded it, uh, it just revealed how bad this really was. Now that blender flow out will only do so much, and the older the finish, and uh, more deteriorated it is, the less it's going to do. So it really didn't do a whole lot, other than um, really reveal the flaws. So what I just finished doing is I took went uh, over areas where there was really no finish left at all, like right there, or over here, and went over it with a mohawk brown mahogany uh, touch-up marker which is a pretty good color match for what was here. Uh, almost perfect. And then I wiped the whole thing down to kind of blend the colors together a bit better with Howard's Restore Finish Mahogany, which is sort of like a thin stain. I'll let that dry a couple days, and then I'll resume clear coating it. Uh, the, some areas are, are just about down to bare wood. And I really want to not only protect it, but build this up a bit and sand it down to, to level this out a bit more, because that's really, it's really pretty crusty, <laughs> pretty crunchy right now. Now, this is as far as I'm going to go. Uh, anything more than this, I would just strip the thing down. Um, it's worse than I realized at first. Uh, and I will use some water-based artist acrylic to paint in the, uh, the grill there cover up all those light spots. I'll use a really dark brown or even black. And you can put lacquer over that once it's completely dry. Getting close to being done on the top. Last thing I'm doing is brushing on some lacquer into the worst of the depressions and now sanding it flat. In other words, trying to fill in the voids. Like this scratch here. And when I sand, I can see where the low and high spots are. So here are some high spots that I need to sand down where I added some. And other areas I can see there's still a little bit of a void. And uh, I need to add some more. Basically, if it's still shiny, like down in that depression, that means I need to add more lacquer. I figure one more pass and I should have it good enough. Also went through the uh, speaker area there and used some dark brown water-based acrylic paint. So uh, that just leaves the sides. I haven't quite decided what I want to do with that. Now that top was relatively easy. The front is going to be the most challenging. Man, is this thing heavy. <laughs> this decorative element is just an inch thick slab, solid slab of wood put on the front, uh, making this, boy, it's got to be over 10 pounds, I would guess. Uh, anyway, so on the front we have some veneer loss. I have to um, find some similar mahogany veneer and cut some patches out. This portion, I believe, is sort of printed on there. It's a fake wood pattern. Uh, not I think, I mean I know it is. And we have some loss over here, so I need to uh, exercise my limited artistic ability to uh, take mix up some paints and try to blend that in. The graphics are really crude. They're just screen printed on. So That'd be one thing if you were to refinish this, you'd lose that lettering, which is pretty miserable. Originally, maybe that was metallic looking. Now it's just sort of muddy, washed out. More loss on the corner, uh, and some weird, well there's probably scotch tape put down here or something. So, trying to clean off that residue. Uh, and then the same deal, uh, I'll just clear coat over the old finish 
and try to preserve it as best I can. And as for the top, I'm just about done. Maybe uh, one more round of light sanding and spray on some new lacquer and that'll be that. In the end, um, it's not as good as I would have liked, but it's a lot better than it was. I'm at the point now where I've done pretty much all I can do, except for the electrolytics, and that's the holdup. We have three on top, all underneath these cardboard covers on insulating phenolic wafers, and there's one down below. Well, what's the holdup? Ah, well, it comes down to how do I want to replace them. A few possibilities. One, um, leave them in place, install terminal strips down below, mount the caps. It'd be a matter of finding a place to put them, drilling some holes if need be, mounting the strips, having a bunch of caps sticking out, and running the wires, maybe having to add extensions to some wires. I really don't want to do that. It would work, it could be done, done it before, many others have as well. It's a little ugly, um, I'd like to do something better if I can. Another possibility is to cut these open and restuff them, which I tried to do briefly. Problem is I can't get these covers off. These cardboard covers uh, are held on by a big glob of tar. Uh, I've tried two techniques. One, getting it cold by leaving it outside in the winter and hoping that I could crack it loose. That didn't work. Tried heat. Just, it's tough to heat it up from the outside, especially while it's mounted at the chassis because while the cardboard is a bit of an insulator and we're trying to heat up the inside of it. Uh, so that didn't work out so well. Uh, I could destroy them and fabricate replicas, but uh, basically when it comes down to it, it's a lot of work that I'd rather not have to do. And also this one is damaged where one of the rivets holding this base on it came off. So there's another thing you can do is to remove these, then they're easier to work on. You have to undo all the connections, remember where they go. and That's also more work than I'd like to do. Another possibility that you've been seeing me do more and more lately is to just install the individual caps on existing terminals, relocate them wherever uh, is appropriate. This set is too complicated for that. There are way too many electrolytics. We have something like six, uh, 12 to 16 we need to install. Uh, and this wiring is really brittle, a lot of it. I want to touch it or manipulate it as little as possible. What I would like to try doing is use a product a number of you have recommended to me over the years, which is called Adapticap. It's a little epoxy fiberglass circuit board that's the same size and shape as this phenolic piece here, and it has provisions for mounting up to four electrolytic capacitors on it. So the idea is you remove this, Undo the wiring, but leave it all in place. Just unhook it from the terminals down below. And then mount the circuit board on these two holes. Populate your capacitors and hook the wires up to the circuit board. There are extra holes in it so you can attach your wiring to it. So there's the advantage of... You have to do very little to the original wiring. And you don't have to mess around with trying to open up this can, remove the guts, drill holes for the capacitor leads, any of that stuff. Now yes, there will be a modern green PCB down here. You can, uh, assuming I can get this off, I could put this cover over it so you'd hide the caps inside of it. Maybe you could paint the green circuit board if you really cared about that. I don't, so I'll just leave it. So uh, uh, I'd really like to try them, but... I ordered them two weeks ago, and they haven't arrived yet. The, the order processing went through, and I got an order confirmation, but no shipping confirmation. So I'll reach out to them. 
Um, hopefully they'll, they'll show up soon, at which point we can get going on it. But for now, I'm going to put this aside and move on to the protogram unit itself. I've just barely done any work on this. I uh, started removing corrosion from some of the parts, but that's as far as I've gotten. So I'm going to clear off the RCA from the workbench, and uh, let's dig into this. And we'll pick up on that in the next installment.